a weird schedule, but thankfully there's enough time in between Sunday and Friday to get ready for our last tune-up, and then obviously, more importantly, get ready for next Tuesday. So it's been a weird week of practice just from an energy standpoint, but I think we've used it time well to kind of get our bodies back on schedule and get ready to go. You think Nick Young's kind of been throttled a little bit by the system that he's walked into? I mean, he's talked about feeling a little bit out of shape for what you guys do and never experienced that in the past. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. seems like he's learning every every day our tendencies and our kind of fundamentals from a team standpoint. And it's been an unorthodox training camp schedule-wise. And um, I know he wants to you know, work on himself to get ready for the regular season, but there's, there's time for that. So um, no doubt it will have a huge impact on our season and throughout the year. And, kind of understanding his, his minutes kind of go up and down depending on situations, but and I'm sure he'll be ready. You know Draymond as well as anybody. Where, where is he? Where is his game? Where is his head heading into the season? Draymond? Yeah. He's a gamer. He'll be ready. Um, I mean, this is year five for him, right? Six? Six. So he's very well versed on how to get himself ready, get his mind ready for the, the gauntlet of the season. And, uh, preseason stats and all that stuff don't really matter for how we expect him to play and how he expects to play himself come come regular season time. So it uh, should, be, should be another great year for him. Just, just from what little we've seen, it looks like in addition to Nick, your other two new guys, I mean, uh, Jordan Bell, the rookie, and, and Omri, they look like they're going to have real impact on this team, which would be, seem surprising for as deep as you guys are, as, as accomplished as... as it's not surprising that. for us. That's why we. That's why they're here. Yeah. We wouldn't sign anybody unless you thought they would have a huge impact. And mm -hmm. why you're you know, lucky enough to drive, draft Jordan um, and get that spot in the, in the, in the draft to pick him, understanding he could be a huge... Threat on, on the defensive end, especially blocking shots, rebounding, being a versatile guy to guard a bunch of different positions and um, offensively adapting to the NBA style of play. And Omri, just his game is so well suited to uh, how he played. And you can see that in our first three pieces, or the first two pieces of the games he played. Uh, he moves about the ball well, he's a shooter, he's a slasher, great passer. Um, he's made comments just about how much fun it is to play in this type of system because everybody gets involved and he has a, um, a, a chance to be impactful in every possession, whether he has the ball or not. Steph, in the, uh, with the new All-Star game, with the way it's set up with the captains having, having a pick, if you're a captain, who do you select first? Probably one of my teammates. You think that would be the trend for the other, the other captains that do well? Yeah, until you run out of those options, then you got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, 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 who would be the first nine? I don't know. Don't know. You're going to go into a draft uh, knowing who pick 9, 10, 11 is going to be. You got to see how it all unfolds. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you like that? Did that, that put you in an awkward spot to have to make, make those other decisions? If I'm the one picking, I don't think it, no, it's fun. It's a different type of uh, setup and a different look, especially on the court when you mix up the conferences and different lineups you can get out there. Uh, I mean, it's been all-stars for years and the you know, past six years, probably certain lineups and notable guys that have been playing together in the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference, and now you can switch it up a little bit. So. Um, for, from a fan standpoint, I know that should be a huge storyline just to see you know, who's playing with who and and uh, even like what they name the teams and jerseys and like the whole setup's gonna be a different look. So it should be fun. You know, the whole the whole society now is all about memes. And can, can you imagine like the last person is left? Like, what they're gonna look like? I mean. They're an all-star, and obviously somebody has to get picked last. Somebody's got to pick second last and whatever. So it's like I'm sure the 
the noise that's evident in our society every single day is going to use that as ammunition to try to make fun of somebody. But I guarantee you, anybody will want to trade places with that 24 is all star <laughs> if they had the opportunity to do so. So if that happens, that's kind of unfortunate circumstance of the uh, of the, the whole drafting situation. Because at least they're playing in the All-Star game. Have you noticed much last night in terms of the things you said and you mentioned about possible White House visits and so forth? Did anybody come back at you and kind of, you know, make you look like you do something wrong or anything? You should go look at my mentions. <laughs> All right, what's it looking like? It's pretty positive. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the ones that uh, want to speak out the most usually find me on there, but I don't pay them no mind. But um, I think the conversation is still going, and that's, that's a powerful thing. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I mean, but you knew when you, when you talk like that, you know that there's going to be two sides for that kind of coming back, right? Oh, you for sure. I, I'm again. well aware that in this world, you're not. there's no way you can please everybody, and there's no reason that you should want to. Um, and I'm very comfortable understanding that fact and not letting that waver or let, not letting that affect kind of my view or my stance or anything like that. Um, especially with the, the spotlight I'm under and my teammates are under and people, anybody who's in front of the public eye, um, you're kind of subject to that and you got to not let that shake your confidence. When you think of... Uh all the way Draymond introduced to this team. How was he able to do it year in and year out? What makes you think he'll be able to do it for years to come? He has all the intangibles of a basketball player when it comes to affecting the game, whether it shows up in the stat sheet or not. Um, and just his versatility, like one of those, uh, it's obviously one of the guys that can guard every position on the court can play inside, outside on the offensive end, can knock down open threes, can play make with the ball in his hands to be a good passer, set up guy. Um, and he wants to be great. Like That's an underrated fact and an underrated skill set in this league of wanting to be great and doing whatever it takes to improve yourself every day, to take on the challenges, uh, the matchups that's across you no matter what the situation is. Uh, having that, that feistiness about you, uh, I think being great matters to him, and that will motivate anybody, really, uh, as you go through your career until you can't play no more. He might be the most self-critical, one of the most self-critical players I've ever seen. Is he like that around you guys? I mean, just uh, basically I screwed up on that pass or that play or something like that. For as many good things as he does, it seems like he's very self-analytical about and he picks out the bad, bad things a lot. Yeah, I, um, you love playing with guys that don't play the blame game or can't find something about themselves that they can do better when things are down. So that's, that's a, health, a healthy habit for any great player to have. Like usually you focus on yourself, you focus, like you said, you can focus on what you need to do to improve what you didn't do well, being honest with yourself about it. Um, because on the other side, of that, that coin is one who always looking at somebody else's, you know, what, what could you have done, what could you have done type type vibe, right. and that, that can get old pretty quick. So yeah, he's not like that at all. Not, pretty much nobody on our team's like that, which is why we uh, usually bounce back from losses, bounce back from kind of low moments in the season really well. This time a year ago, Steve was saying that he was more comfortable putting Patrick out there, put you guys in that like, rotation. What do you, you said he also would be comfortable putting Jordan out there. What are you seeing from Jordan so far through the training camp in the first few uh, preseason games? He's got a pretty high defensive IQ right now, just work, knowing where to be, being aggressive. His confidence, almost like how Pat looked last year in preseason when you knew he was a gamer. Whenever he had an opportunity to impact the game in the preseason, he was ready for that moment. The game in Shanghai was... Uh, just a clinic of defensive awareness, 
aggressiveness um, and decisiveness on that end of the floor that got us a couple stops, got a couple steals, uh, was in the right place at the right time and, and on the offensive end to finish some possessions. So, I mean, his experience will obviously get better and his um, coach is going to throw him out there uh, at some point. He knows that he's just got to be ready to play, be able to carry that momentum into the regular season.